Good morning, everybody. My name is John Browett. I'm the general manager with the CC Link Partner Association in Europe, and I'm joined this morning by Arno Stock, who's the business development manager at Renaissance Electronics. And um, we're glad you could join us this morning to um, see our second webinar in our time sensitive networking series. Uh, time sensitive networking, what, why, and how. So, uh, we're going to um, start out with um, an agenda here. So, um, first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about what is time sensitive networking, and then we're going to uh, explain why it's important. Then, um, I'm going to hand the presentation over to Arno, and he's going to go over how a TSN product can be implemented. Um, he's also got a case study of, of how uh, one of Renesas's customers was able to do a implementation of TSN. And then we'll finish off with um, some conclusions and some links to more information. And then um, at the end, we'll have a question and answer session. So uh, for those of you who are, who are familiar with uh, GoToWebinar, um, you probably know that there's a uh, questions uh, section on the toolbar there. So feel free to type your questions into that box as we go along. And then at the end, we'll go through the questions we get and, and hopefully uh, answer them for you. And then just a final point, um, please note that we are recording this presentation. Uh, the plan is that after we've finished today, we will put it on YouTube. So um, if you have colleagues who you think also might be interested in this, feel free to share it with them. And also, um, if you signed up for the seminar but weren't able to make it today, um, then you have a chance to watch it later. Okay, so let's get started. So uh, let's start out by exploring what is time-sensitive networking. So um, I think most of us these days are familiar with the concept of Industry 4.0. It's, it's well established now for many years, uh, I think almost 10 years now. And um, so basically what it comes down to in, in our context is, um, is transparency. And basically that means being able to see what uh, is going on in your process and understand it better so that you can run it more effectively. And as you can see here, um, this, this is kind of a global activity now. It, it may have different names in different places, but the, the general idea is pretty much the same no matter where you go. So, so we've, we've established that um, the key point here is transparency. So um, the question you may ask yourself is, well, how will TSN help with this goal of increasing transparency. And um, basically, um, what it will help to do is uh, increase what we call network convergence. And this can happen in, in two different ways. So we can increase the amount of convergence that we get on the shop floor itself in the factory, and also between the OT and IT levels, um, so between the factory and, and higher level systems. So you may be wondering what convergence is exactly. Well, basically, in, in simple terms, it's the ability to have multiple kinds of network traffic running together on a single network architecture. So the, the benefit of that is rather than having multiple different kinds of networks running together, uh, but carrying different traffic on the shop floor, so maybe a network for safety, a network for motion, network for control, and so on. You can now combine all this together, and, and as we'll see in a few moments, that will deliver a number of key benefits um, when you're designing machines or systems. Um, the, the other key point here is that um, we're seeing now, as we move forward, that um, the, the amount of bandwidth in networks is increasing. Um, in the past, most people believe that 100 megabit Ethernet was sufficient to provide the necessary bandwidth to allow data to be shared within a process. Uh, and really what we're seeing now is Industry 4.0 moves forwards 
100 megabit is really not sufficient anymore. And, and as a result of this, um, gigabit bandwidth is becoming commonplace. And of course, this gives you a lot more bandwidth, which means that it's better able to deal with the kind of uh, tra traffic demands that you're seeing in these kind of systems. So let's um, take a few moments to uh, go through what some of the key principles are behind TSN from a technical point of view. And um, so it's defined by a group of IEEE standards in the 802.1 group. And um, basically, in a nutshell, what these do is they take uh, standard Ethernet and, um, and they add some features to it which make it deterministic. And um, so hence that gives you the foundation for network convergence. And for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with what determinism is in this context, um, really it can be explained simply as being making sure that something happens when you expect it to. So for example, you know, if, you, if you're running a motion control application, usually it's quite important that everything is synchronized and everything happens exactly when it's required to, otherwise um, things get out of sync and possibly damage can occur. So um, that's really what the key principle of, of determinism is in, in the context of this presentation. So the, the first uh, thing to consider is, um, is time synchronization. So this is handled by a standard called uh, 802.1 AS. And, and what AS does is it allows all the devices on the network to be synchronized with each other. So basically they, they all know exactly what time it is. And, and to kind of give an analogy for how this might work in, in everyday life, um, if you consider uh, a railway network taking a train from one town or city to another, um, if you think about it with a railway, if, if nobody on the railway knows exactly what time it is, it makes it much more difficult to make sure the trains are going to run punctually. It's going to make it more difficult to know how long it's going to take for a train to get from one place to another uh, and so on. And, and in the same kind of way, AS provides this kind of functionality for, for a data network. So, so rather than being trains running back and forth, it, it's data packets. But what it does is it helps to uh, guarantee determinism by giving you very precise control of latency and jitter. So basically latency is the delay it might take to have traffic on the network move from one place to another. And then jitter is the variability in that latency. So basically, you know, you can control how long it's going to take for data to move from one place to another. And then you know if there's going to be any slight variation in, in that delay. So by having good control over those two parameters, it means that you get a very predictable network traffic flow. And as a result, because you know exactly how long it's going to take for traffic to flow across the network, you get the determinism that you're looking for. There's also a, a second item to consider, as well as the time synchronization, and that's the, uh, the topic of scheduling. So there's a second standard, uh, 802.1 QBV, and this applies to how traffic is allowed to access the network. So um, as, as you probably are familiar with your own processors, you, you may have different levels of, of traffic priority in a system. So for example, maybe you have a, a machine where there's some kind of video inspection task going on and you've got some kind of video camera that's sending video frames over a network. But at the same time, maybe you've got um, safety systems and so if somebody hits an emergency stop, you want to make sure that that has the highest possible priority on the network and, and overrides the, uh, the video frames, perhaps. So basically, QBV is, is related to this kind of application. So um, the idea is that it allows you to prioritize different kinds of traffic and make sure they don't interfere with each other. So, um, so by doing this, this kind of provides the second part of the story for determinism. So that, that gives you a little bit of the technical background. Um, there's, there's actually a lot more TSN standards. If, if you look this up on the IEEE's webpage, you'll see, I think at the moment, there's about 30 different TSN standards, but the, the, the two that we just covered 
are really the important ones as, as far as automation goes. So, um, so now we've got that technical background, let, let's take a look at why TSN is important. So, so now we understand a little bit of the technical uh, mechanisms behind how TSN works. Let's take a look at why it's important in practice. So, um, so you know, if you're building a machine or system, what is it actually going to do for you? Well, really, um, the, the key benefits are kind of outlined by this little animation at the bottom of the page here. Um, the idea is that this will allow you to com combine multiple kinds of different traffic together on the same network. So I think probably most of you are familiar with the fact that up to this point, it's already been uh, possible on some networks to combine different kinds of automation traffic together. So for example, IO, motion and safety traffic can often coexist on the same network already. But what we typically haven't been able to do in the past is to then add other kinds of Ethernet device traffic as well. So for example, you know, if you've got a system where you've got some, that, some devices on it which maybe aren't classical automation devices, you know, for example, like we say here, barcode readers or printers or something, that are just using TCP IP traffic. Now you can also add that kind of traffic to the same network too. So it, it's going to make things a lot more simple in that respect. Um, the other thing is that um, you know maybe you're used to having a network where you have just one kind of industrial Ethernet protocol running on it. Well, TSN is now offering the ability to combine several different kinds of protocol on one network. So if you're running a, a factory where you have different networks being used in different places, the chances are you could now also connect these together on, a, on the same network. And then finally, um, as we'll see in a moment, it's also going to make it easier to get traffic to and from the factory, the OT level, and uh, the IT systems that, that maybe supervise everything at the IT level. So let's just take a, a short example of, of how this could work in the OT case, the operational technology case. So you can see there's, there's a diagram here where we've got a simple automation system. We've got different types of automation devices here. So that they're the ones with the red, um, sorry, the, the, the blue numbering, I should say. And then you've also got um, some devices which maybe are just using normal TCP IP uh, communication, the, the devices with the red numbering. So you can see here with the blue numbering, we've got maybe uh, a PLC, a servo drive, a robot, and, and so on. But at the same time, maybe we've also got perhaps a laptop and a video camera. Um, so you know we've got these different kinds of traffic that are going on together on the same network. And, and what the chart at the bottom is showing us is that the blue traffic, which is related to the process of running the system, the automation traffic, if you like, that's able to coexist at the same time as the red traffic, which is the maybe not automation directly related traffic. And, and as a result, these two sets of traffic can share the network at the same time and, and they don't interfere with each other and, and everything operates in the uh, required way. And then taking this one step further, um, we then can see how we've got the factory at the bottom where it says manufacturing system in the, in the lower half of the diagram, the OT layer. And you can see there, you have all those orange lines everywhere connecting everything together. And, and what that is showing is that we're using a single network type to, to connect all that stuff together. And therefore everything is, um, is sharing data on the same network architecture. And then taking that one step further, we, we now have one common flow of data that we can take to maybe an edge server or something like that in, in the middle there. And then that's doing the necessary filtering to decide um, what is important for the IT layer. That's going up to IT systems, maybe the cloud or whatever. And then that's been analyzed. Its conclusions are being drawn from that data. And that's been fed back down into the process so that the process can be optimized. So by doing this, as you can see, we're, we're getting the kind of transparency that we talked about at the beginning that is the kind of thing that we need to 
have successful industry 4.0 applications. So th this is all great and it seems like there's lots of neat stuff that can be done with this. Um, but what does it actually mean in terms of business benefits? Of course, at the end of the day, while maybe we are, we're looking at the technical stuff, we all need to keep in mind that we need to keep the business running and we need to make money and, and, and stay in business. So how will TSN help us do that? Well, first of all, as we've seen already, it's going to allow us to have simpler network architectures and machine designs. So therefore, this means that it should reduce the cost of designing and implementing this kind of thing. And, and therefore also, if you're building machines, for example, you'll get a shorter time to market and so on. As we just saw, it's also going to make it easier for us to run our processes because we're going to be able to understand what's going on in them in a better way So we have because we have better transparency. And then that should also lead to more productivity. So, you know, we can make more products and, and serve more markets and shorten delivery times and, and all this kind of stuff. And then finally, as, as we saw, if we've got better integration between the OT and IT layers, then, you know, this again strengthens the transparency and the management uh, of our processes. So that, that's giving you the introductory overview. So with that, I'm, I'm going to hand the presentation over to Arno, and then he's going to explain how Renesas can offer solutions for developing TSM products, and then run through a case study of, um, of how this was done in practice. So um, over to you, Arno. Yeah, thank you very much, John. So welcome everybody uh, from my side. My name is Arno Stock from Renesas Electronics and I'm business development manager for our industrial automation Ethernet products. Um, and therefore, uh, yeah, I'd like to present to you uh, what um, we offer in order to support uh, CC Link IE TSN. Um, so please, next slide. Um, so, um, yeah, in order to support TSN, um, you need a dedicated hardware because uh, of the uh, specific features John uh, introduced, like uh, time synchronization, like uh, traffic scheduling. So this is certainly something uh, you cannot achieve by a standard uh, solution, a silicon solution. So um, this is why uh, Renesas uh, developed um, the REN32M4 CL3 device. Um, so uh, I can be proud uh, to uh, to state that uh, Renesas is active in the TSN uh, domain since uh, 2016. So um, maybe you remember back there was um, yeah a big hype upcoming about TSN uh, that time, and uh, certainly we engaged um, and uh, we participated the test beds uh, to evaluate the new TSN technology um, to uh, gain the experience and finally um, be able to uh, to specify and design this uh, first uh, TSN uh, device. Uh, so this device is available since 2019 uh, and um, yeah it's already uh, let's say uh, quite uh, matured in the market. Um, so what do you need to uh, consider in particular when, when doing uh, design for uh, industrial TSN, in particular for an IO device? Um, so um, means we are in the OT world um, and building IO devices uh, puts you um, uh, or puts special requirements uh, to you and your solution um, in terms of the capabilities to support the real-time networking uh, in particular the TSN uh, standard support and uh, as well as uh, constraints on power supply, on board space, uh, on cost, etc. And um, all these requirements had been um, uh, considered uh, when building the RIN32M4 CL3 device. It is um, latest chip in this RIN family, which is uh, uh, on the market uh, since uh, uh, many years already. Um, and um, so in order to, to support um, TSN operation, um, we um, took a powerful ARM Cortex-M4 CPU system 
um, which is uh, um, supported by on-chip RAM, uh, several peripherals and a dedicated uh, TSN enabled ethernet controller. Um, so then uh, we as well integrated the FIS. So it means uh, we really did a single chip solution uh, which can be used to easily um, build um, CC Link IE TSN uh, IO device application. And uh, so since uh, it is a fully integrated solution, this is of course um, yeah, minimizing your risk and supporting you to uh, come to a painless uh, implementation for your first uh, or probably first CC Link IE TSN product. So uh, next please. So if you want to start up um, uh, building or gaining your own, uh, first experience or start uh, evaluation um, of our solution, um, there is a Kickstart kit available. Uh, so this Kickstart kit is uh, containing all ingredients you need, uh, starting from the hardware, means uh, this evaluation board you just saw, um, but as well accompanied by all the software uh, parts you need uh, to get immediately to a running uh, CC Link IE TSN solution. So it means um, using this starter kit um, will let you make a first experience and uh, evaluate the technology and our solution for your product uh, with minimum effort. So it means, um, yeah, typically you can start without one hour to get your first CC Link IE TSN uh, solution uh, up and running. Next page, please. So um, the software which is provided along with this, uh, with the RIN32 M4CL3 device uh, comes with all the uh, necessary uh, drivers and protocol stacks for CC Link IETS and support. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course we obtained the certification for it. So um, uh, for sure uh, your product finally needs an own certification, but um, yeah, since uh, all the components we are supplying are already certified, um, this is uh, a low risk, um, uh, um, um, or this, this causes low risk um, because you can build upon a certified and matured solution um, and uh, just add your specific application specific uh, parts, um, which is uh, typically uh, not um, uh, putting the certification itself at a high risk. Next, please. So yeah, then um, let me show you a case study. So uh, means, uh, yeah, as I, as I um, mentioned, the product is uh, on the market since uh, 2019. Um, so uh, since then, uh, yeah, several uh, vendor adopted the chip and uh, successfully implemented CC Link IE TSN uh, I.O. devices. And uh, so on the next slide, um, yeah, you see an actual um, product uh, which is uh, implemented by uh, one of our customers. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, um, it's available uh, on the market. So um, you can order this, uh, this uh, product. Um, from uh, yeah, fr from from distributor and uh, um, means um, that's an example for a successful CC Link IE TSN implementation based on RIN32 M4 CL3, and uh, I think this is um, yeah, this is a very important um, uh, achievement and also message to the market um, because uh, yeah so there's a lot of great theory about TSN but actually what what we need and uh, what you and your customers need uh, is a real product with uh, TSN support so you can um, really uh, uh, utilize uh, all the advantages of TSN uh, in in your uh, facility uh, in the, um, let's say, uh, for, for the end customers. And uh, so this is just one example um, I can show um, where this becomes a reality <clears throat> and uh, we are uh, successfully uh, an, an actual TSN product uh, could be achieved. 
So next, please. So this was just one example, uh, which is already on the market. Uh, so uh, we have uh, several other companies which are currently uh, developing um, uh, uh, solutions um, based on RIN32M4 CL3. Um, so in total, three solutions are already on uh, in, in mass production. So these are uh, components which are available on the market. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, the, uh, let's say, um, uh, several other companies are, are under development uh, and over 20 companies are currently evaluating uh, TSN, uh, CSC Link IETSN technology uh, based on our RIN solution. Next one, please. So along with this um, uh, Kickstart kit, uh, Renessas as well prepared a demo um, where we can show the benefits of uh, CC Link IETSN as well um, as the capabilities uh, of our uh, Renessas solutions. Next slide, please. Um, so the demo consists uh, of uh, uh, CC Link IETSN uh, master which is controlling uh, two drives um, assist, uh, systems. So uh, they are um, interfaced to CC Link IE TSN via the RIN32M4 CL3 device. And um, so uh, this device is used as a communication interface for the RZT chip, which is a dedicated uh, servo control device um, and which is actually doing then um, the uh, high precision motor control. Um, at the end of this chain, um, yeah, you can see a network camera. So uh, means this is an example uh, for the demanding uh, requirement uh, of, of having additional uh, traffic on the factory floor network uh, for uh, surveillance cameras or other uh, applications uh, which um, cause additional network traffic. And uh, yeah, we can successfully demonstrate here that uh, the high precision motor control and uh, the network camera uh, can operate on the same TSN network uh, without interference and uh, which with achieving um, the uh, high real-time requirements for the motor control as well as assuring the uh, data throughput for the surveillance camera. Um, so that's an uh, yeah, actual available uh, demo, um, which is, um, let's say, confirming uh, the capabilities of CC Link IETSN as well as the uh, support by the Renessa Silicon. So, next slide, please. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's um, that's an example uh, how a motor control uh, solution uh, could be implemented. Um, so when uh, uh, stepping to CC Link ITSN, uh, it doesn't mean you need to replace your whole application. Um, it is uh, yeah one feasible way uh, to just exchange the communication module module. Um, using um, the uh, CC, uh, the RIN 32M4 CL3 hardware uh, plus the certified uh, stacks and uh, interface uh, this as a communication solution uh, to an existing motor control application. So for this, we uh, the chip provides a powerful uh, communication interface. Um, which uh, can use, uh, for example, the standard uh, SRAM interface uh, of your host CPU to um, create a high performance and low latency uh, data communication channel with the RIN32 used as the communication chip. And um, yes, as you can see on the bottom right, since uh, FIS and uh, RAM is integrated on chip, um, the total solution just needs the RIN32M4 CL3 chip uh, plus an external uh, QSPY flash for storing the firmware image and of course a power supply. Um, so uh, then, uh, yeah, that's a quite uh, low, um, let's say, uh, bomb list or small bomb list, uh, which enables you to efficiently uh, integrate um, the chip onto your uh, own application. 
Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, well, um, yeah, I, I think that that covers uh, covers it from Arno's side. So uh, thank, thanks very much for that overview, Arno. Um, so we're, we're almost done for today. So um, I, I'll just finish up with some conclusions, and then um, we'll uh, also direct you to some more information if if you want to learn more. So um, just just to kind of summarise um, the key points about TSN from today. Um, so we, we believe that TSN is a key technology for the future of industrial automation. Uh, hopefully what you've seen today maybe uh, will lead you to agree with that conclusion. Um, but just to reiterate the, um, the four key business benefits that we mentioned earlier, um, we, we believe the reason for it be, being a key technology is as, as we state here. So. Uh, we believe that it's going to make things a lot simpler as far as designing systems and machines in the future, because instead of having all these multiple networks carrying different kinds of traffic and, and making it difficult to get a good picture about what the process is doing, TSN now offers us the ability to combine all of those different kinds of traffic together on a single network. So as, as we saw earlier, instead of having a different network for safety and motion and control and, and other things, we can now integrate all of that together on one converged network and, and keep things simpler. And, and as we saw already, um, we believe that the result of this is going to be greater process transparency. So as we saw at the beginning, if we're trying to meet the demands of Industry 4.0, we believe this is one of the key things that you're going to need, the ability to really understand what's happening in your process and therefore manage it in a better way. And as we saw earlier also, we believe that if you can run your processes in a better way, then of course in the end that's going to result in better productivity. Clearly a, a productivity gain can be achieved from a process where it's running in a much better way compared to one which is not being run in such a good way. And then finally, as, as we saw, the idea of, to take this one step further is as, as well as having better control of what's happening on the shop floor, we also now believe that TSN is going to make it easier to take that data out of the process and, and move it to a place where it can be analyzed and in, in an IT system of some kind, and then draw the necessary conclusions from that data, uh, produce actionable information, and then feed that information back into the process to, to get the kind of management and transparency uh, gains that, that we're looking for. So, so hopefully that's, um, that's something that you guys all think uh, could benefit you as you move forwards. And, um, Let's just finish off um, with just some quick overviews about um, about who the CLPA is. So, um, the, basically, the, the CC Link Partner Association is um, is responsible for the technical development and promotion of, of the CC Link family of open networks. So that, that's what we do. So, um, right now, we've been in existence for just over 20 years. We, we were founded in 2020. And we have about 4,000 partners in the association right now. And that includes um, about 350 manufacturers who together offer about 2,300 products that are compatible with our various network technologies. And, and as you can see here, um, the fact that there's 32 million devices that are installed worldwide means that um, you know, there's, there's been some very significant take up of, of these technologies worldwide in, in many different industries. Um, and really, as these charts show, I, I think that that take up is being um, demonstrated by the fact that we've been growing at a double digit rate um, over the past few years. So, you know, the, there's certainly a lot of interest in, in what we do and the technologies that we can offer. So, um, when it comes to how we support TSN, as you probably realized by now, um, we have our technology for that, CCLink IE TSN. And um, there's, there's a lot more information we can share with you about that. Um, 
So um, you can visit our website at the link there and um, you'll see on our homepage, um, there's a link there to download a white paper that we have, which um, kind of explores the topics that we covered in the webinar today in more detail. And um, we, we hope that maybe you might uh, have a chance to, to download that and, and take a look at it. Um, we also have um, a YouTube channel that's got a lot of uh, content on there related to TSN and, and, and many other topics. Um, so if you visit us there on YouTube, there, there's uh, many other videos you can watch, which uh, again, maybe will give you um, some more background. And, and of course, uh, we're planning to uh, put the recording of this uh, presentation on there later as well. So uh, as I said at the beginning, if you've got other colleagues who you think might benefit from watching this, um, they'll be able to do that later. And then, then the final point about us is um, we also have a virtual booth at the link there. And um, that's uh, a recreation of one of our actual fair booths from, from recently. And um, while that's uh, kind of got a key focus on TSN as well, you can learn more about um, what we do in general and, and some of our other, other network technologies and also see more information about the companies in our association who offer various kinds of products that, that use our network technology in them. And of course, um, not, not to forget about Renesas. Uh, Renesas is, is a key partner of the CLPA and um, you know that they offer some very uh, flexible solutions for building various kinds of industrial ethernet products and as arno explained earlier um tsn is one of the technologies they um they support so we'd encourage you to uh, go and visit their website and and also learn more about uh, the rin32 devices and, and other associated devices that they can offer for building industrial Ethernet products and, and also supporting TSN. So with that, um, we'll just finish up with a, with a quick question and answer session. Um, we, have, um, we have a few minutes left before we uh, say goodbye for today. So I, I can see we, we have some questions already that people have submitted um, during the presentation. So uh, I, I'll go through the first one. Um, so our our questioner here is asking, what is the added value of TSN to be integrated into CCLink IE? For example, capability of real-time synchronization, etc., which may not be available on CCLink IE. So yeah, that, that's a great question, and I guess I should probably take that since it's um, CLPA related directly. Um, so um, yeah, basically um, until about, uh, well, almost three years ago, um, we had CCLink IE as our main industrial ethernet technology. And uh, that was supplemented back in 2018 with CCLink IE TSN. But it's still the case that um, CCLink IE is still definitely uh, a current technology and, and it's going to be around for a while yet or as we transition into the future and TSM becomes more established. So um, to answer the question, um, CCLink IE is, is definitely real time uh, as is CCLink IE TSN. That they're both hard real time networks. So you know there's no issues with determinism there. Um, but the, the key difference between them is that, um, that the, the added value that TSN delivers by adding that to CCLink IE is that, um, as, as we saw in the presentation earlier, it allows you now to combine additional kinds of traffic together on the same network. So in, in, in the case of CCLink IE, um, certainly you can combine together things like motion and safety and control traffic together on one network and that's great and that offers a lot of benefits but as we've seen earlier um, and as, as Arno demonstrated in, in his uh, sample system earlier um, if you now want to add some other kinds of traffic to the network which maybe are not necessarily safety or control or motion related you know as, as Arno showed in his demo earlier um, there was a video camera sending video frames across the network too 
um, with, with CC-Link IE, that, in general, that's not really possible. Um, whereas with CC-Link IE TSN, we can now add this additional traffic to the network too. So, so re really, the fact that you can combine these multiple kinds of traffic together and, and have a single converged architecture, as we talked about this morning, um, that, that's really what, what, what the key value that we can offer now is and and i think you know that that's going to be something that um a lot of people are going to be looking for as as they move forward with new designs of machinery and so on and you know they're looking to simplify things and and avoid having multiple kinds of networks all over the system and and consequently making things harder to manage more expensive to build more difficult to maintain and so on so so hopefully that's um answered that question um and then um I guess um, there's a second question here, which um, I guess, um, well, I guess now, I guess this is still a CRPA question. Um, so um, the question is, I, I see the RIN32 product has been certified for CC-Link IE TSN. Do OEMs developing with this ethernet controller still need to do its certification the advantage still remains that it's very prob probable to pass. Um, well, actually, I, I guess probably Arno and I can both uh, answer this. So, um, so I, I would say from from the CLPA's point of view, um, we do um, we do offer conformance testing facilities. Um, we, we actually have a, several test labs around the world, so that there's a, a location that's um, convenient to to where you are. And um, here in Europe, um, we operate a lab in Germany, so that's uh, convenient for most of Europe. And, and so we, we do require that um, devices that use our technology are conformance tested because therefore that provides the necessary guarantee to customers that, they have, that this product is going to function correctly on the network along with, with other products from other vendors. So, so yeah, conformance testing is, is a key part of what we do. Um, but then I think probably I'll know um, as, as, as far as the certification goes, um, so the, the, just, to, just to recap, the, the question was, the RIN32 has been certified for CC-Link IETSN. So basically our participant is asking um, if, if you've got an OEM who is using the RIN32 to develop a product, um, do they still need to do a certification for the product as a whole? Yeah, sure, because um, the uh, the capabilities of the product may differ from the uh, uh, from the uh, sample certification uh, we got. So therefore, um, you should uh, or you you need to go for certification uh, with your dedicated product. Um, however, uh, Renesas is of course uh, 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 providing you all the ingredients you need. It means um, uh, providing the stack software where you build your application upon, and we are also maintaining it. So it means whenever there should be uh, uh, new requirements uh, for the certification or there should be uh, issues detected, um, we will provide an update. So it means um, the uh, so we will always uh, make sure that uh, the certification of your product uh, will go smoothly and uh, without uh, having issues with the deliverables from our side. Yeah, and I, I, I thanks Arno. I, I think that's a key point. I, I think it, it's necessary to understand the difference between certifying the communications platform, as it were, and certifying the product itself. I mean, certainly Renesas provides a device that will um, provide the correct communication performance um, with the RIN32. But um, at the same time, you know, at CLPA and Renesas doesn't really control how your product functions in terms of what it does as a product. Um, so, you know, for example, if you've got um, you've, you've got an inverter, for example, which is controlling motors and so on, um, while Renesas can say, okay, well, we know it's going to communicate properly on the network, 
we don't really have any control over how the inverter functions as a product and and so therefore if if there's any issues with with that general functionality uh which need to be uh checked as far as working on the network goes that that's why it's still necessary to do the certification for the product as a whole um so just a, a couple more questions here just to, just to finish off um so um I, I guess these are two questions directly for Arno because they're 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 aimed at Renesas. So um, the the first question is um, uh, somebody would like to know how they can obtain the Kickstart kit that that uh, that you talked about, Arno. So if you can maybe just uh, explain that a little bit. Yeah. So the Kickstart kit, uh, the hardware, this is provided by AAR Systems. Um, so you find it uh, on their webpage, and uh, you also find a link on our Renesas uh, webpage. Um, so there's a dedicated page about the Rin 32M for CL3 product, and uh, here you find the link uh, to the Kickstart kit. Uh, sold by IAR and uh, as well you find all the documentation and uh, software packages um, for the device so um, it means uh, uh, if you look to the Renesas uh, homepage you will find sources for all um, uh, components you need uh, to start up uh, the kickstart kit and uh, get your first uh, CC-Link IETSN experience. Great thank you. And then uh, another question here aimed at Renesas is um, um, what are Renesas's plans on TSN? Will there be more devices with CC-Link IE TSN support in the future? Yes, um, uh, sure. So um, we consider uh, CC-Link IE TSN as uh, yeah, one of the future protocol uh, built upon the TSN technology. And um, yeah, as Renesas is uh, actively uh, evaluating and developing TSN technology uh, since 2016, uh, we will of course uh, continue this and introduce TSM uh, support uh, into all of our new uh, products for our industrial uh, Ethernet communication. Um, and uh, so this will definitely cover CC-Link IE TSN uh, for all these products in the future. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, we are going to release um, the next devices by beginning of next year. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned and uh, you will soon find uh, more products supporting CC-Link IE TSN uh, in our Renesas portfolio. Great. Um, well, it looks like we've got maybe just a couple more questions just to finish. We've still got a few more minutes this morning. So um, kind of following on from that one, Arno, um, somebody's asking, um, are there any particular product types that um, the Renaissance solution is more suitable for? And I, I guess maybe what this is getting at is um, with having the, the ARM core and so on in, in the device. Um, how the how that can uh, benefit your designs and so on mm -hmm. yeah sure so um uh, actually uh due to the arm core um you are able to uh to uh, add uh your application code um to the software running on this chip and uh, this enables you to either use it as a communication chip which is just focusing on uh, bridging uh, CC-Link IETS and communication between the Ethernet wire and your uh, application controller, um, or you are able to implement even your application on the chip uh, utilizing the M4 core. Uh, so this means uh, um, uh, application with um, uh, low uh, demand uh, for, for computing power, uh, can completely be uh, uh, um, implemented using just the RIN 32M4 tier 3 as a single chip solution, um, while application which need uh, dedicated uh, or additional processing power um, can use the chip uh, as a communication device uh, connected by, by the powerful host interface um, and uh, enabling all kind of uh, other 
application chip um, to uh, have an efficient communication path to uh, CC-Link IET and Ethernet. Great, thank you. And then I think looks like final question for today. Um, is it necessary to get a license for the software that Renesas provides? So I guess that's one for you, Arno. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the software can be obtained from our web page, and um, uh, so uh, it's it's uh, there's no um, uh, let's say uh, so. Of course, you you need a license to use it, but uh, this this license is uh, provided along with the device, uh, so you don't need to bother. Uh, additional um, uh, costs or, or let's say uh, royalties for this so you can just buy the device install the software and that's it great sounds good okay well i think um that's everything for today uh, we, we've covered all the questions that people have submitted so um i think it just remains to say thank you to arno for for joining us this morning and thank you also to everybody in the audience who uh, who attended the uh, the presentation today. So um, with that, um, we'll say thank you, and um, please stay tuned for uh, the next session of um, these these presentations. We're, we're working on a on a part three, which um, we're going to hopefully be able to do that sometime in the near future. And um, so yeah, stay tuned. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.